This is Neil King for Random Acts of Cartooning, and I'm in Belize in Central America, and I brought my sketchbook, and I thought I'd show you my process. But first... Okay, everybody, uh, our influence today is for Back Alleys and Urban Landscapes by Michael Cho. Uh, Michael Cho is this great illustrator who does certain amount of comics. Um, and I'm a big fan of a lot of the stuff he does. I'm sure I'll do other books that he's done. But he's really great at this limited color, um, contrasty uh, style. Uh, and whenever I see his work, you really see how much he focuses on going and seeing the real thing. He probably takes a lot of photographs. He probably goes to locations, does some sketching. But I love this book because it really shows uh, all the detail and all the love of, um, of design. Because it may seem like in certain things when you're walking past something that there's not that much going on. But an artist like he is, he sees it. And just the contrast of everything, the fencing, all that background with that limited color. It just it's just beautiful stuff. And he compiled all of these into a series. And I just love all of them. Um, you know, to me, it's like a hopper type of look in some respects with this work. And you can see his influences for lots of different things. But for comics, he reminds me, you know, his kind of stuff is kind of like Darwin Cook and all, but he just has a such a great feel. Like, look at that beautiful design. So when I'm out drawing with my sketchbook, I really feel like he must have felt going around, and I'm just looking for something interesting. And it just could just be the way certain buildings look next to other buildings, or that there's a big area of emptiness that contrasts with the line and the dark areas that come off of it. Got great perspective, but his sense of color and subtlety. That's what I really love. And he does a lot of limited color. I, I'm, I find myself doing the same thing. I can't help myself. I, I love the limited color. So um, if you can pick up this book, it is just spectacular. I look at it all the time. Back alleys and urban landscapes, great influence. Michael Cho. Okay, um, so what I always do wherever I travel, I bring a sketchbook. So this is a brand new sketchbook that I started. And I thought I'd show this first. So I think out of, we went for nine days to Belize. Um, that's in Central America. And we stayed in um, little place right outside of San Ignacio, Ignacio. And um, I just do lots of different types of sketches. So whether they're still lifes or that you're actually going to specific ruins that you would see um, in Belize, uh, I'll bring my sketchbook and I'll try my best to uh, get as much um, real sketching done as I can. Um, this is, we went over and saw this iguana uh, exhibit area conservation part. Um, this is, again, like there was this dogs, there were multiple dogs at this place we stayed, and they were very really cute. This is uh, our cabin where we stayed. There's lots of opportunity to get out there. And on our walk, we saw, you know, all kinds of different animals. And, um, and it just really makes my visits wherever I go. Um, much more memorable, I think, by doing this. This was amazing going into a cave and we tubed. It's the first time we've ever tubed in a cave. Lots of amazing images. I had to take pictures for this one because it's too dark to actually be able to draw. So I took pictures and then I did sketches when I got out. We had a guide who brought us through. Really amazing stuff. We love going into caves. Um, so cool. St. Herman's uh, Cave in Belize and uh, just an amazing thing and this is a huge tree 
It was outside of uh, another place that we had stayed in the rainforest. And this little creek down there, these falls, and Jaguar Creek is where we stayed. Lots of opportunity, if you're interested, to just see things and see how things work, right? Um, Placencia is another place we visited. Went uh, snorkeling and was able to go on a little island. And this was fun, The one of the only bowling alleys in Belize, and we had to go barefoot doing it, so that was fun to do. And just, you know, at the end of the trip, this was just a little um, small little river area that we had a boat. And over at the airport, I can't help but draw airplanes when I'm there. So this is the book that I brought, and that's probably over that many days, nine days, I probably did 20 some odd drawings. So I tried to be active when I was doing this. So I thought would uh, I would show you some of the places uh, that we went. And again, these are ruins. And so you want to when you walk around these kind of places, you really, you know, there are so many types of things to draw. But for me, what I uh, tend to do is like, especially when they're, you know, famous places or historical places. I taught uh, advanced placement art history for many years. So whenever I see these types of ruins, and these are Mayan ruins, I really have to to get them into my sketchbook and to uh, just kind of show myself um, the proportions and everything of when you're doing this kind of work. So it's a close-up. And I'm, all I'm doing when I'm going back and forth with this, I look up and back, uh, and I'm just really making sure that I have the proportions that I need um, So as I'm doing that drawing. right? It's a huge piece of architecture and really great to draw. Of course, it's really hot out and the sun is beating right down on you. But, um, but these are the kind of things that if you don't do them and you don't see the proportions of how everything's done, um, when you have to do it for your comics or uh, other things, you really need, uh, you know, you, you really need that kind of proportion. You need to be able to have that experience of drawing these things out. As you can see here, all I'm doing is just little touch-ups at the end. I do a lot of hatching uh, just to make sure that I can see the parts that go back. You can see in the sun the big dark areas uh, that that the uh, the way that they did the stones would have looked. All right, each one of these sketches take about I don't know 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and uh, and then I just kind of move on. Any kind of place like this, um, there's just so many things you can do. But once you kind of start drawing these things, you uh, you realize how much detail. Um, uh, there can be in a piece like this. And so when I'm am drawing these things, I, I try to get the, the major shapes out first. And then I'll get uh, onto the, all the, the defining things. I'll, I'll even throw people in just so you can get an idea of scale. Um, and without that idea, it's hard to be able to tell exactly how something is. So no matter what I do, I tend to put somebody in it um, as I go along to remind myself and somebody else who would look at it later um, what the proportions are and how much um, you know goes into doing one of these kind of pieces because again that's like it's overwhelming how big something like this is and how it works with all of the um, with the landscape all those stones, like I wouldn't put in every one of those types of stones, but um, and even all the sculpture that's in there, um, it's a lot to see. It's a lot to understand to how to deal with it in that in that part. But this is kind of how I, I work along with it. Lots of texture, lots of mark making to to show the viewing audience how this works. Again adding lots of little detail. And all this is important too, to show the proportion of some of those marks uh, of the sculptures that are made. So um, within that large size of the ruin, um, 
you want to keep it pretty close as you're going along. And these are the things too, sometimes you're like, oh, this would be great to draw. And then you're like, oh my God, there's just so much to draw. Um, so, but I, once I'm kind of in, I'm going to do it. And, um, and it's important too, like, I think just for, you know, the character of the things that I draw, that uh, there's a certain amount of detail that no matter what I do, um, it's based on some type of reality, um, not just me making things up. And to look around at this landscape, it's, you know, it's a fabulous place to visit if you've never been to Belize. So many of these types of things to find when you go to a whole different culture like this. So as I'm going through, I'm trying to wrap up some of the major parts to this. You can see there's a lot of people walking around. And when you just have your sketchbook and a pen, like, you know, nobody even knows what you're doing over there. But uh, people are just kind of making their way around, doing their thing, as I kind of complete uh, the last proportions. And if you don't put in, to me, if I don't put those hatches in, um, you're not going to be able to see how everything relates to each other, what comes in front of something else. Uh, if the lines are too simplistic, I think you kind of lose uh, what's going on in, uh, in the piece. So um, there will be things that I'll have to outline a little stronger to make it come up forward uh, or just to allow certain things to go alone. I, if, if I drew every one of those little stones, I think it would uh, bring your eye away from what was really going on. So on the sides, I might just give it a little bit of a stronger line. And if there's any kind of major uh, architecture behind it, I might just indicate it slightly just to give it, again, some type of uh, a sense of depth for this. But this I'm really kind of looking up and there's just clouds behind it. A little bit of indication here of uh, some different foliage and stuff that's way behind it, but there's not a lot back there. And sometimes I'll put clouds and stuff like that, but, uh, but because of the little details um, in the sculpture part, um, I don't wanna, I don't wanna put anything in there. It's kind of finished up with that. And there it is. And it's just a part of the way that you interact with places that you go to. And, you know, most people take pictures and artists like ourselves, we like to maybe draw some things. Okay, everyone, as you know, I am a working cartoonist. So this is, we are talking about the holidays right now. So don't forget to go to my Amazon site where you'll see some of my different types of books that I have. Uh, Strange Tales for Boys and Girls, that's an all-ages book. Snowman in the Springtime, all ages. Three uh, Little Pigs in a, ba uh, in a Blanket. These are all things that uh, all kinds of kids would like. Limited color. This is a series that I did. Um, the Deep End. Spaghetti Eddie with, his, with the meatball eyes. And my parents are ninjas. That's kind of a three tandem thing that I had done. Also, I have more educational types of books. Who Stole All the Heads at the Met? Fun book. All kinds of art history. Then I have some more of my adult books. These were online books that I compiled as graphic novels. Kill Me or Die. Abbey in Hell. And Forbidden Planet. Different format, black and white interiors, lots of fun. And then my most recent, Shock. Let there be fright. Again, all the things that I'm doing, all my episodes, everything I'm doing here, as a, and all of my things, it's really about getting my books. So support me in the holidays and get to friends or someone in your family some of these books. Thanks. Okay, here we are again in our next place that we had stayed in. And this is right in um, the rainforest. And you see these amazing trees with these, all of these roots that are so big. I, you know, this one I love to draw. I've, I've drawn other ones like this before. Um, 
And the technique that I try to do is um, within the shadows of, uh, of this that you want to keep things very vertical. And when you do your hatching very vertically, um, it seems to give a nice sense to what's going on there. If I did everything horizontally, I feel like I lose the sense of how tall everything is and in proportion. So already I've kind of, I put in the regular simple lines and then I'll go right in as much as I can and, uh, and then put in some of these vertical shading lines. I put my like wife in there in the front again for proportions. She's always looking for different bugs and mushrooms and different stuff like that. So it's good to be able to tell how big that tree is. It's just colossally big. It's like a little building over there. So, um, but there's nothing like kind of doing something like that. Another indication of outdoor sketching and it really helps in your work at home. Beautiful, amazing, natural wonder. So the last place uh, for that I actually filmed while I was there is again, you know, we're right out there, the little body of water. I'm on this little dock and there's a little waterfall down there and it's great. Um, people tube around that area. There's nobody there early in the morning. We're out there kind of after breakfast and I'm trying to get the sense of that little waterfall with a pen. And to me, there's a, this is the cartoonist in myself trying to get the sense of the dynamic feeling of when uh, the water effects that you need to be able to show when you're seeing water come down like that. You know, if you did it in color, there's a lot of different ways to do it. But when you're doing it with a, a pen, with just line, um, you have to be ready to, um, to use some of the techniques that you would do as a cartoonist to show a little bit of motion and movement. I also am just laying in all the darks for the contrast and, and just trying to get as much of a information as I can. I love drawing rocks and um, bones and all different things like this. So this is like stuff that I like to do and just to see what happens um, when you're viewing this. Now, I didn't film all of this um, you know, from beginning to end. So when, if you want to, like in the video, just look back on when I showed all the finishes to see kind of what, how I handled the ending of this. But I liked all the hatch lines. I like being able to, to show a little bit of the foliage. And then, you know, that's kind of where I am with this. Lots of little things to see. So I hope uh, you enjoyed this and you should get out to Belize if you can. Um, an amazing place. And I can't wait for our next uh, vacation so that I can go and, and add to my book. This is my 14th sketchbook. Thanks. See you next time.